Morning. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, give everybody a chance to get on here who's watching this on Facebook Live. Uh, also, you guys that are joining me on YouTube, I appreciate you guys taking your time out, uh, whether it be this morning, this afternoon, or tonight, or whenever you may be watching this. Uh, again, I'm Ricky Scaparo, the founder and the pastor and the voice of End Time Headlines. Um, I've got a, a little devotional that I want to share with you guys uh, that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, it's called, I kind of entitled this, We Have to Remember Who is Ordering Our Steps. Now, obviously, uh, I'm speaking to those who have made a covenant with the Lord, those who <clears throat> are in covenant with Him through being born again, uh, you're actively serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, then I believe this will be a word of encouragement to you uh, as it was to me this morning. And it was interesting. I got up this morning about 7 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and uh, this is the devotional that I did this morning. And then I actually walked this out. I actually um, was walking out this word this morning. It already <clears throat> gave an opportunity for me to walk out. Thank you guys for joining me today on Facebook Live, and also you guys will be joining me on YouTube. Um, here is our foundational, I guess you can use this as our foundational scripture if you would, and we're going to jump around here uh, with some other verses as well. Uh, hello guys, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Um, again, the New Living Translation, you guys can uh, kind of you can shadow this with the New King James or King James or however translation you want But again, I like how this is worded uh, in some of these verses that I'll be using today Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6. It says this trust in the Lord with all your heart and Do not depend on your own understanding the New King James says do not lean on to your own understanding but seek his will in all that you do and he will show you which path to take. Let me say that again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't rely on, depend on, or lean on your own intellect or your own understanding. Don't try to figure out God all the time. Come on, somebody. This is something I'm guilty of. We all, I'm guilty of always trying to figure out what he's going to do next, how he's going to do it, how he's going to bring it to pass, when he's going to do it. Come on. He says, but trust in the Lord, depend on your own understanding, but seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take, okay? Now, let me give you some other verses, okay? Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, okay? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24, the Lord directs our steps, so why try to understand everything along the way? That's good, guys. Listen, listen to that. Proverbs 20, 24, the Lord directs our steps, so why try to understand everything along the way? In other words, what's the word of God say? We walk by faith and not by sight, the just shall live by what? Faith, okay? Here's another verse. Psalms chapter 37, 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly and he delights in every detail of their lives. Let me say that again. The Lord directs the steps of the righteous or the godly and he delights in every detail. I just want to tell somebody that's watching today by YouTube or by Facebook, he delights in every single detail of your life, okay? Um, and then Proverbs 16, verse 9, it says, we can make our plans, but the Lord ultimately determines our steps. In other words, we get up in the morning, we rise up, and we, 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 we have a calendar, we have a planner, we, we, we make our plans. We're going to go to the bank today, we're going to go shopping today, we're going to go to work today, we're going to go here today, we're going to do that today. So we make our plans, but the Lord ultimately, at the end of the day, guys, it's God who has determined our very steps. Now, we're going to bring it home here. We're not going to spend a lot of time today in this, but it's going to be a very simple and powerful devotional. Okay, this is uh, the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Philippi. Listen what he says. Again, this is the New Living Translation. This is what Paul says to the church of Philippi. 
while he's in chains. He says this, and I want you, this is, uh, again, this is Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. He says, I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has actually helped to spread the gospel. Uh, in other words, he says, everything, all my imprisonment, my chains, everything that has happened to me here has happened to me to help spread the gospel. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I'm in chains because of Christ. Or in other words, they know that I'm in prison because of my testimony. They know that I've been in prison because of the persecution that has come against me because of my uh my witness of Christ. And he says, and because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. In other words, listen, let me break this, let me break this down and bring this home here. Paul is saying, I know to some believers, they would never think that they would be put in prison because of the gospel they know that they would never suffer persecution because of the of the gospel they never they never expected bad things to happen to good people hello but paul says these bad things my brothers and sisters these unforeseen circumstances my imprisonment my chains and my putting into this persecution has actually been used for good because number one it's leading others to christ because i'm able to preach the gospel to those who are imprisoned and number two it's actually strengthening the faith of other believers that have also been put in chains because of their witness to the gospel and now they've looked up to me and they see my boldness of Christ. They see that I've not allowed these chains to shut me up. Come on, the word of God says that you can put chains on the, the, the speaker, but you can't put chains on the word. Let me say that again. You can put chains on me, but you can't change the word of God because the word goes forth and it will not return void, but it will prosper and it will establish that thing it's sent forth to do. So a Again, you can, come on, you can put, you can try to put God's word, you can put his people in a box, you can put them in chains, you can behead them, you can try to, you can martyr them, but their voice will carry. Remember Stephen was being stoned and Paul or Saul, if you would have, Tarsus was there to witness the, the stoning of, of Stephen. Um, but and even though he was martyred, even though he was he was killed, he, the the his mantle fell upon Saul, and he became Paul, and he was the very one who wrote this epistle to the church of Philippi, who again was an eyewitness to the stoning of Stephen, an eyewitness to be Stephen being martyred, a situation that I'm sure Stephen didn't plan on happening that day when he got up that morning. But in, in but in but indeed he was stoned and while they were stoning him he's the Bible says that Stephen looked he he looked and he saw a, a, the open heavens above him and he says I see Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and he began to forgive those very ones who were stoning him but this witness came upon Saul of Tarsus and it actually did something in his heart and it was the seed that was planted in in his heart so when he had his road to Damascus encounter we know his conversion was made on the road to Damascus now I took some notes here that I want to get to you guys I want you to think about today Joseph Look at Joseph. Joseph didn't. Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph had a plan for his life. Joseph had a um, he had a destiny upon him from a young child. He never he never dreamed that the day would come when he would just share this destiny and he would begin to confide in his family. But those very people that he trusted, those very people that he confided in, would end up turning against him. His own brothers, his own family began to they ridiculed him, they persecuted him, they abandoned him and they turned against him and it turned him into a prisoner he was falsely accused he was put into chains he was forgotten but all this at the end of the book of Genesis when his brothers were standing there Joseph said the evil that you intended 
For me, God used for good that many may be so saved this day. Remember Moses. If Moses had not if Moses had not intervened and uh, and one of his brothers being beaten and persecuted, he, uh, the situation would have not happened where Moses would have murdered somebody, which looks really bad on the outside. But if it wouldn't have happened, it wouldn't have drove him to the wilderness. And if he wouldn't have been driven to the wilderness, he would have never had an encounter with the burning bush. And if he would have never had an encounter with the burning bush, he would have never been called to be a deliverer to all of Israel. So the, 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 the situation that looked evil, that looked bad, that looked negative, that looked like, why is this happening to me, actually turned out for the for the furtherance of the gospel and actually turned out for good for the for the children of Israel and for Moses destiny. So what is your situation today? Listen, guys, I had this situation happen today. We had a situation come up that was unforeseen. We didn't expect this to happen, but thank God, God had, had already had a contingency plan in order. He had a, come on, he had a backup plan, which we call a backup plan, but in reality was the plan all along. But it was to, to, to it, I believe it was to allow me to realize that though I make plans, though I make preparations, he's still the boss. Come on, somebody. He's still in control. He's still sovereign. He's still Elohim. He's still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's still Yeshua. He's still Jesus. He's still the Messiah and he's still in control. So maybe, listen, and I wrote some stuff down. Maybe you're listening to me today by YouTube or by Facebook and you've been looking for a house. You've been house hunting. You've been shopping. You've been looking for a place to live, a place to go, a, a new place, and everything keeps falling. You, you had the perfect house lined up. You have the perfect location lined up. You had the apartment lined up. Come on. You had the townhouse lined up, but for whatever reason, it fell through. Uh, it didn't work. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's It felt good. It looked good. It it seemed looked like it was good. It met every criteria of your liking, but it fell through. And this happened to us years ago. We walked into the quote unquote perfect house. It it had all the bells and whistles in which we liked. It had all the liking in which we wanted. But at the end of the day, it fell through and it didn't happen. And we got mad. We got disappointed. We got discouraged. But what we didn't know then that what we found out later on is that that house was full of radon. And it was, it was, I mean, it was really bad. I mean, there's some houses that has radon and it can be, uh, it can be, you know, uh, it can be dealt with and, it, and it's not really posed a threat to your health. But this situation, this house ha had a, uh, a large amount of radon. So in, in retrospect, looking back, thank God that the Lord allowed it to fall through because it could have been dangerous to our health. So again, we could not see that. We didn't perceive that. But what am I talking about? I We made plans in our heart, but it was the Lord who ultimately led our steps. Maybe you didn't get the job that you wanted. It seemed like you had the criteria. Come on, your, your resume was perfect. You had all the qualifications but you didn't get the job. Somebody else got the job. Somebody else got the raise. Somebody else got the promotion. But what you didn't know that you later on found out is that if you would have got that job, got that position, got that raise, it would have put you in a predicament where you'd be in a bad shape today because later on down the road, the company ended up shutting down. Come on, it went out of business and it went bankrupt. And then you would have found yourself under, under more stress because you would have had to find another job. But could it be possible that God is not allowing you to get that position, get that job, get that promotion, because he knows in advance that that company is going to go bankrupt, it's going to shut down, come on, that there's going to be a temptation there that is too great for you to be able to overcome. What am I talking about? I'm going to talk to all the guys here listening, or even women. Maybe there's someone in the office that's there that they've got a Jezebel spirit on them. Come on, Sam, uh, Samson. Maybe they got a Delilah spirit and they know how to weaken your resistance. Come on, someone who looks good, smells good, that's a temptation that you don't want. Listen, the last thing I want is to be in an office somewhere and I've got some Jezebel or Delilah always looking over my shoulder, always on my back. I've got enough temptations to deal with and to deal with something like that. Maybe you've got a temptation to drink and maybe you would have been put into an environment 
environment where all the people that you would work with, the boss, the, your co-workers, they're drinkers, they're bar hoppers, they're clubbers, and you, you would have been around these individuals, you would have been around this environment, and the Lord knows that he couldn't have you in this environment because you would have been pulled away and you would have been pulled right back into the bondage of which he pulled you out of. Come on, we never, what am I talking about? We don't know the situation that God has but, but we got to remember, he knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. And we're just in the journey and we're walking by faith and not by sight. Come on. Have you ever been in traffic before? And, and you get stuck in traffic and you're there for, for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You're starting to lose your temper. Come on, I'll preach to myself. I'm going to preach to myself here, uh, if you don't mind, for, for the next few minutes, for the next uh, few moments. Uh, so we get aggravated because we're going to be late. We're not going to be there on time. Why do we got to sit here in traffic? It's 95 degrees. Come on, we're in Atlanta. We're in California. We're in Texas. Wherever you're watching, you're stuck in traffic and you're complaining the whole time. And then eventually, 45 minutes later, you get up to the reason why there is a traffic jam. And lo and behold, you discover that there's been a major accident and people were killed. And now all of a sudden, conviction hits you. And the Lord happens to speak to you and says, the, the whole time you were complaining, have you ever thought maybe that I, I, I allowed you to be late or I kept you uh, uh, I kept you delayed in traffic because it could have been you that was in the car accident. It could have been you that lost your life. So be thankful that though you waited 45 minutes in traffic, that it was not you that slipped into eternity before your time or was killed when it could have been you. Guys, that's happened to me. I remember, I remember many times we, uh, we were in a one time in particular, um, that uh, something happened, uh, the car wouldn't start or this happened or that happened. And I was like running 15 minutes late to, to, and I had to be somewhere and I was 15 minutes late. And, and what I found out that there was a major car accident on the interstate in the same direction that I would have been going. But I, I, I began to realize that the time frame, I could have possibly been in the exact same location, same place, and same time as the victims of the car accident. But thank God that he orders my footsteps. And you say, well, what makes you better than anybody else? Listen, I don't know. I call it the favor of God. All I know is that the word of God says that he favors his righteous cause. All I know that he puts his angels around about those who fear him and he delivers us out of all our troubles. All I know is Psalms chapter 91. He that dwells under the secret place of the Almighty and dwells uh, under the shadow of the Almighty. He says, no evil shall befall them. No plague shall come nigh their dwelling. So if there's anything tragic or anything uh, th that's negative that does happen, I know that it's by divine order or divine purpose of the Lord God. So again, what am I talking about today? I'm talking about, l listen, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but perhaps God has got you in the place where he's got you, in the job he's got you, or in the position he's got you, and you've been praying to get out of it, or you've been praying to get in it, but perhaps that there's somebody, listen, I know I worked construction work, hard work for five years, I didn't like it, I didn't, but it paid the bills, uh, it put food on the table, 50, 60 hours a week while my wife was going through nursing school, I had to be around people that cursed and sweared and blasphemed God every single day. And I asked God, Lord, when am I going to be delivered out of Egypt? But the Lord spoke to me and says, son, the, 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 my purpose for you is greater than your, un, than your, un, uh, than your comfortability. In other words, he said, I have you here and it's not because of you. He says, I can provide a raven like I did Elijah to drop meat to you. I can put you by a brook, but I've got you working here because your influence is for a greater purpose. Come on. What did Paul say? He said, my chains, he told the church of Philippi, he says, I'm here in chains for a greater purpose. I'm here to win souls to the kingdom and I'm here to encourage the other brothers and sisters. And I thank God, and looking back in retrospect for my time that I thought was hard, that was rough, that I didn't want to be there. I look back on that in retrospect and if it wasn't, if it had not been for that time, I would have not met a dear brother in the Lord that I'm good friends with now that 
that uh, the Lord allowed me to encourage and to raise him up really and to disciple him in uh, the deeper things of God that he had never been taught. So thank God for that. Thank God that the Lord used me in dreams. Um, I remember there was two individuals there in particular that I worked with. The Lord gave me a dream about two of these individuals and they were both warning dreams. One was about an individual in a car accident and another was an individual about uh, him and his wife and about a situation that if they did not intervene in this and make a, cer a certain uh, decision, then it could have been a, a car accident. But I remember when I got to work, I shared these dreams and I said, please, uh, uh, I know, you, and, and I didn't care what they thought about me, but they thanked me for it, even though they were not serving God. So again, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what God did not allow to happen, and I don't know what God allowed to happen, but I do know this. I do know, according to the Word of God, that He allows all things to work together for the good of those who are called according to His purpose. Listen, I know I know that one individual, I know that one guy forgot Joseph, but the other remembered him. And when he did remember him, it wasn't when Joseph wanted him to be remembered. It was years later. It was a, it was a, it was a time frame in which Joseph did not have any control over. But it was when, but the Bible says that when the fullness of time had come, Though Joseph was in chains and fetters, when the fullness of his word came to pass, he was delivered. His word came to pass. The chains were released from him, and God promoted him and positioned him that he would be the one who would save all of Israel from a famine. So again, guys, encourage. I hope you're encouraged by this word. Um, I don't know your situation, but I'm telling you, I believe this word uh, can be relative to every situation, whether it be financial, whether it be, whether it be a healing in your body, whether it be a marital situation, whether it be looking for a home, whether it be a, a family situation, whatever the case may be. Let me pray for you real quick, guys, because I feel like I need to pray for some people. And we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to release this word. We're going to receive this word. And I'm, and I'm praying that through prayer, we're going to activate this word of God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for those that are watching by YouTube and by Facebook today. Lord, I don't know their situation. I don't know their circumstances. But I do know this, that I, I know that you're in charge. You're the boss. Lord, you are in control. You're on the throne. And you said that, Lord, it's it, we make plans in our heart, but it's the Lord who ultimately leads our steps. Lord, you said, if I trust not in my own understanding and not lean to my own intellect and my own comprehension, but if I trust in you with all my heart, you said that you would direct my paths. Lord, you said that it's not for me to figure these things out, but just trust you and walk by faith. So Lord, I thank you, Father, for those individuals that are walking, walk, uh, watching and listening today, Lord, and however they may hear this or, or watch this, I thank you that, Lord, you're working out the situation in their job, working out it in their finances, working it out in their health. I thank you that the word shall go forth and not return void, but it shall prosper and it shall flourish and it shall bring to pass that thing it was sent forth to do. I thank you that they shall not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, they're going to reap if they faint not. Lord, I thank you that Abraham chose, Lord, to hear the word, an impossible word. Lord, he heard the word, word and he chose to encourage himself and be strengthened in his faith and not waver at the promise. Even in his old age, he did not choose to waver. And your word says because he believed in God, he became a friend of God. Lord, I thank you that, Lord, even today, help me to, re to remind myself today, whatever the situation today, whether it be in traffic, whether it be at a store, whether it be a situation, Lord, it may not go the way I want it to. It may not turn out the way I want to, but God, I have to trust. How many times am I going to learn in this situation? How many times am I going to fall short with my mouth or with my complaining or with my murmuring? Come on, somebody, who am I talking to today? But no, that in the end, 
It's you who's in charge, and I just need to surrender to that and know that, Lord, at the end of the day, God, you are going to, you who brought me to it are, is going to bring me through it. You who began a good work in me is faithful, who will see to it that it shall be accomplished, it shall be finished, and it shall come to pass. And I thank you, Lord. Healing is coming. Deliverance is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Prosperity is coming is coming. Promotion is coming. Deliverance is coming. Uh, uh, restoration is coming. Reconciliation. So I thank you, Father, and we give you glory. I give you praise and honor for my friends and my family here on Facebook and YouTube. God bless you guys. Again, thank you guys for your support, your prayers, uh, and your partnership of End Time Headlines. Again, you can find me at endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. All this information will be uh, in the content of the description here on Facebook or YouTube. Just look below on the description. You'll see the website address, and you'll see down there below how you can support this ministry uh, with whatever the Lord puts on your heart. If you want to partner or whatever the case may be, again, God bless you. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you soon.